assembly what my job description was. And I told them I was a DEA agent working uh, uh, international narcotics investigations. And I told them, look, you know, we have gathered intelligence that the cartels are involved in drug trafficking down in El Salvador. And then he just smiled, shook my hand, and, and walked away from me. And it was then and there that I knew that my government knew that these atrocities were occurring. They were so concerned about giving the guns to Iran and all that stuff. The question should have been asked about all that cocaine flying back over, over here. In 1986, on American TV, we were all being fed a steady diet of... We're taking down the surrender flag that has flown over so many drug efforts. We're running up a battle flag. This scourge will stop. But regrettably, back in Central America and in the jungle... I remember down in Central America, we were refueling planes full of cocaine coming into the U.S and uh, it was a CIA uh, operation being run by the White House. At the same time all of the cocaine from Nicaragua was flowing into the U.S., Freeway Ricky Ross was at his heyday. The average week would at least be two to three million dollars, almost guaranteed. Some days we would have two and three million dollar days. After Freeway Rick was arrested, an investigative journalist by the name of Gary Webb uncovered a link that connected him back to the Nicaraguan Contra movement. I read Dark Alliance, I got a, a, a copy uh, personally from Gary Webb himself, and to read the book, it, it, was, it was fascinating for me, you know, to find out that I was connected with the CIA and, and all these high-powered people up in the government. Ricky Ross was just lucky. He just happened to get a source who was connected to the CIA. For a long time in South Central, the buzzword was that the CIA was selling crack. I said, no, the CIA wasn't selling crack. The CIA was importing cocaine. Ricky Ross got it, turned it into crack, and he sold it. According to Gary Webb's Dark Alliance, when Danilo Blandone was displaced from his home country of Nicaragua, he set off to America to raise money to aid the Contras in ridding his home from the invading Sandinistas. When Ricky Ross was introduced to Blandone, Blandone was in a position to create a pipeline of cocaine that he in turn gave to Ricky Ross on consignment. Which I like the sound of that, you know, because I was always trying to get to the top anyway. Suddenly some major sources opened up for him. Danilo Blandone, Norwin Meneses, both of whom were tied to the CIA and the Contras, and Gary Webb did a masterful job of uh, breaking those stories and proving with documents that that was the case. Whatever we were running in LA, he goes, the profit is, it was going to the Contra Revolution. I started doing a little research on my own and I read a little bit about Oliver North and the Contras because I never knew what the Contras was before. There's ledgers of, uh, of Oliver North and them actually transporting the cocaine to our country. There's field. Every piece of document that's possible. Talk about being in the wrong place at the wrong time. First time dealer and former Crip, Leroy Chico Brown was arrested with Rick. Chico walked into a DEA sting operation that was set up to capture and imprison Rick and trade for Rick's old partner, Danilo Blandone. How could this be possible? And we read him through the documents and then that's when Gary Webb started explaining it to us and we was like, everything came together now. One of the most paramount moments perhaps caused by Gary Webb's Dark Alliance took place in November of 1996. It was a monumental historic event. I mean, the director of the Central Intelligence Agency was coming to Watts to face the people. Now we all know that the U.S. government and the CIA supported the Contras in their efforts to overthrow the Sandinista government in Nicaragua in the middle 80s. Now it is alleged the CIA also helped the Contras raise money for arms by introducing crack cocaine into California. Deutsch felt he had to do something to try to uh, deal with the outrage that was foaming all over the country at the time. And of course, it just blew up in his face. CIA fights drugs. CIA does not encourage drugs. I mean, it was, it was actually one of the most monumental blunders of all time, uh, if you think about it. We have no evidence of a conspiracy by the CIA to engage in encouraging drug traffickers in Nicaragua or elsewhere in Latin America. Deutsch was there because of the Gary Webb stories. The Gary Webb stories had sparked a national furor. I would like to have Richie Ross's uh, brother to speak, please. The United States government turned their head and let this cocaine come into the United States of America. 
allow Gary Webb to have full access. This whole thing is orchestrated. It was near pandemonium. It was about, I guess, 1,200 people in the standing room only in the auditorium, 2,000 people outside listening on loudspeakers. And uh, it was very hard to keep control. I got called on finally, and I said to her very clearly, I'm talking, looking right at Deutsch. I am a former Los Angeles police narcotics detective, and I work South Central Los Angeles, and I will tell you, Director Deutsch, that the agency has dealt drugs throughout this country for a long time. Uh, I was able to name operations. Director Deutsch, I will refer you to three specific agency operations known as Amadeus, Pegasus, and Watchtower. I have Watchtower documents heavily redacted by the agency. I was personally exposed to CIA operations and recruited by CIA personnel who attempted to recruit me in the late 70s to become involved in protecting agency drug operations in this country. He stumbled and stammered and wrung his hands. If you have information about CIA illegal activity in drugs, you should immediately bring that information to wherever you want, but let me suggest three places. The Los Angeles Police Department. And of course my response was, I started there 18 years ago, sir, and they tried to kill me. Now what do you want me to do? If this information turns up wrongdoing, we will bring the people to justice and make them accountable. The crowd started chanting, we told you, we told you, we told you. And it was a great moment of unity. And it was a healing moment for me, because I'd been out alone for 18 years and didn't really know that, that that kind of support was there for me either. The average person in South Central Los Angeles did not know anything uh, about really how the CIA worked. They had an intuitive sense. If you have a private network run by George Bush and Ali North, not the CIA, you won't find the records in the CIA. They're not there. They're in these private privatized intelligence agencies. Will you pursue that? Will you pursue Ali North and George Bush and the, the massive documentation? All these gentlemen, like this gentleman here, the co-defendant of Ricky Ross. They needed the money to finance the war in Nicaragua. They had the link. We know that from records now that they sent Blando, who was a CIA operative, CIA, to school for marketing. Marketing the product which we now know is cocaine. Me and Ricky Ross is waiting to get sentenced Tuesday. And she got what what, what a judge gonna say to us come Tuesday. Uh, may I just say that the a question which was asked of us by the judge was, was Ricky Ross ever a agent or a contract employee? I already knew that from the beginning of, of, of dealing with Danilo Blandon that he was sending supplies and things of that nature, computers and guns to Nicaragua to fight a war. Ricky had already served a five and a half year sentence for dealing crack, but was now given a second 20 year sentence after being set up by his former partner Blandone, while Oliver North walked away as a hero, wealthy and free to try his hand at politics. Oliver North was uh, being promoted by the Christian Coalition, and to them he was the last white hope that uh, they were going to have for a right wing um, Christian to run for U.S. Senator Virginia. During the 1986 Kerry Commission, Oliver North's crimes were exposed to the American public. And yet today, Oliver North is not only a free man, he has his own show on the Fox News Network. It's amazing that uh, Oliver North has his own TV show, and, and hopefully when I get out, I plan on having my own. How does a federal agency like the CIA exert control over local law enforcement agencies? The way it's done, uh, which I saw firsthand at LAPD. There are networks called the Narcotics Intelligence Network, or now it's called Clearinghouse, where agencies who are doing a drug case don't step on each other's toes. Every time the police go invade us, I know Rick used to get calls and say, uh, move out, you know, they coming. We actually saw that here in 1986. Uh,